Hey guys, Carl here. Today we're going to be talking about the Bright Tangerine Misfit Kick Mark II Map Box. There's really three brands when it comes to professional map boxes in the industry. That'd be Wooden Camera, Airy, and also Bright Tangerine. Personally, I'm a big Bright Tangerine fan, as you can probably tell from my previous videos. Also, I spent my own money on this. Bright Tangerine did not send this to me. Uh, there was no discounts, no nothing. I bought this from B&H at full retail uh, with a three-stage filtration setup and all the accessories that I'll show you throughout this video. The first thing I'm gonna cover is the versatile configurations that you have with this map box. What you're seeing right now is just the base frame. So this is just it by itself. And there's so many different ways you can mount this onto your lenses or your camera system in general. The way that I chose to mount it is with the 114 millimeter clamp-on adapter. So this just guy, this guy just goes on like so. Put it up like that, tighten these guys up. And now I have myself a uh, 15 millimeter rod support and this guy clamps on to the actual lens itself using one of these screw-on adapters to the lenses. I'm using Sony lenses, so I'm using various different threads, thread sizes. So this one right here is a 77 to 114. That's the one I chose, but there's also the, the rod mount, so you could rod mount this where you don't have an adapter there. Uh, and then you can also do a swing away, so that way this guy, you can put it on there and then you can swing it away from the camera change out a lens and then swing it back in place and then adjust that accordingly to what, how the length of that lens. Most of the time if you're using cinema lenses, a lot of those lenses will be the same length. So you just flip it out, change your lens out, put it back in, and it should be that same length or sit in the right spot. So yeah, the configuration is huge for this. It's very adaptable to the situations you may be in. This is something that you could like, you know, fly in with and you have your own matte box. Uh, if you're using another camera system, or if you know the lenses you're going into it with, you can adapt this to the situations in which you're in, which is huge being able to, you know, always adapt to the situation. That's a, a big part. And they really thought that through with this map box. The second thing I'm gonna talk about is the lightweight construction of this guy. So it's the main frame here is built out of carbon fiber, and then you have precision cut aluminum everywhere else, um, which makes it really light. In fact, I was really surprised, at, you know, it's it's a pretty good size map box, so I mean, it's pretty big, and it was felt lighter, or actually it is lighter, than my Polar Pro map box that, um, that I've been using for a, a long time now. And I was really stoked on that because I've been looking, I, I try to keep my, my rig heavy enough to where I can um, have less movement, you know, or less like shake in it, but I, I also do like it to feel robust and and light at the same time where I could you know do a lot of things with it and it doesn't break my back all day. It was nice to see that this was coming in lighter than my other matte box, which is a huge plus for me personally. The three stage system. It comes as three stage. You can order it in two stage or three stage. You can still go to three stage if you get the two stage. It just comes with two of these filter trays versus three of them. Uh, you, so you can adjust it out no matter what if you do buy this, the two stage or if you just buy the frame by itself and then you can buy these separately. These are about 90 bucks, I believe, um, something like that, $90, somewhere in that range. And these guys, I'll talk about these here more in a second, but the filter tray, this is set up right now for three. Uh, it's pretty simple. So these little silver guys on the sides, you just loosen those up and then you can adjust that down um, to a two stage. This is my one gripe with this map box is that those do get a little stuck sometimes. And it is a little bit of a nuisance when I'm trying to do things quickly and go from two stage to three stage. They, do, they don't slide super well. And that's the only thing that bugs me a little bit about this system. Like now it's working fine. And I think you just have to slow down to speed up, if you know what I mean. Um, Cause like that works like that. That's working fine now. When it's mounted on the actual lens itself, it's a little bit more difficult. So that that adjustment is huge. It makes it super quick, super fast. Uh, and then you just take your filter system, whatever you're using, and you just place them in there, slide them in, and you'll kind of hear this click into place. And they're pretty secure. You can push them through the bottom. So be careful of that. As you can see here, I'll just 
do that. So you, they can drop out the bottom, um, which can be a little scary. If you're running rods, obviously, if you're running rods down here, your rods should be able to stick out enough to where they won't fall through. But just be keep that in mind that, that your filters could drop all the way through. It's not like the Polar Pro system where they kind of close off at the bottom. And I, I understand if you're using, <clears throat> you know, longer filters or something, that's a, a thing. But yeah, I mean, they do click into place pretty well and they don't feel like they're gonna move very much. So as you can see right here, I now have two filters set up inside of this. So I've got two filters and then you just close these guys up with these orange, orange, right? Tangerine orange, uh, little clamps. And that just closes that right in. So those aren't gonna be moving anywhere. And you can shake it around and nothing's falling out, which is awesome. So yeah. So the three stage system is pretty cool. And then if I wanna throw the third stage in there, just loosen these guys back up. So now that we have those guys loosened up, that third stage is open, as you can see right there. And we'll just take our third stage like so and place it right in there like that. And now our third stage is in and we can tighten these back up again and they're not gonna be moving anywhere. And now we've got our third stage. So if we wanna do ND polarizer and a mist filter or something like that, we have that set up right there, which is honestly pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the three stages. I'm not gonna go too much more into detail. That's kind of the big selling point of this matte box is, how, is the three stage capability. And it's, it's huge. I love it. I use it constantly in the field. Uh, as a three as three stages because I do like to run a uh, polarizer, an ND, and a mist. Those are my three my filter stack, and I'll go through those more in detail here in a second and like what brands I'm using. But yeah, so that's I have this one backwards. Disregard that in the final video. And then if you want to take them out, obviously pretty simple. Just loosen these guys back up again. The gold slash orange guys, and you can pull out your whole filter stack out in one fell swoop and then you can take and push this back into being a two stage if you want to. That's the adjustability of this map box and being able to, to set it up in two stage or three stage. The flag system. So we have our map box, we have our top flag. This is honestly so nice. So you just take, you have these two little guys here, um, little thumb screws. And you can just take, and this guy's got some notches, and you put it in like so. And then you can tighten those down. And your flag is on, and it's so secure. Kind of let it drag, and then you can adjust that to wherever you need it to be. I like to have it a little bit tighter, and then you can just adjust that however you want to. So the top flag is nice. It has these other little pieces on the outside where you can extend that top flag. Save yourself a pretty good fan to cut even more light. And then you also have these optional side pieces here where you could put side flags on to really make it so nothing can come in from either side or the top. Um, I don't have those, uh, I didn't purchase those separately. It would be kind of nice to have at some point, depending on the project I'm on to have that flagged off on the sides as well. So yeah, the top flag, carbon fiber, super lightweight. It doesn't add much weight to the actual build itself. I really wish you guys could feel the weight of this because it's it's just so light. It's just so easy to kind of throw around and it feels, even though it's kind of big, it, it doesn't feel any different on the camera itself. I mean, you just see this nice matte box up there when you're, when you're operating, but it doesn't affect the actual weight of the camera too much. I mean, your filter stack and what you put in there um, are running two or three, you know, two or three filters will adjust that weight. But honestly, it's it's pretty impressive how light it is. I still don't think I'd want to run it without uh, rod support or something on there, unless I'm just running one filter on a you know 35 millimeter or something like that out in the field. This isn't going to put a bunch of strain on that lens, but you never know. You just want to be careful. And that's why I like to run the 15 millimeter rod mounts. Plus it makes me feel more comfortable if I'm running like a longer lens, like a 7200 or something, um, or a longer cinema lens. You can put those on there. This acts as my rod support for my lens then also, which is cool. I'm, I'm going in 
depth further than the top flag, but the top flag is what I was talking about for this section. So top flag, huge, huge plus. It's really nice. You can have these in the 15 or 19 millimeter rod mounts. Um, so if you did want this with the 15 millimeter or a 19 millimeter, these are 15s at the moment, but you can buy those accessories to where you, if you need the 19 millimeters, you can easily do that with that. This kind of goes into the tool free operation as well. Once you get this guy set up and you put the uh, rod mount on, there's no tools involved in this. It's all thumb screws or it's all like, you know, just tightening up with your, with your fingers. There's no tools. You can, you can go tighter on some of these. There's, um, Looks like hex. Yeah, there's some hex screws in there that you could just tighten those up if you really want to go like super Superman tight. It's not needed. I've never had this come loose and the, you know, 15 hours of operating I have done with it so far. Um, have not had it come loose, haven't had anything shake around. It's been very secure and robust. And that's, uh, I haven't had any issues with my Polar Pro one either. Just the fact that it's not industry standard and I haven't been able to use the stack of filters that I've been wanting to use with it. And I have to use the proprietary filters. And if I break something, I have to order it in and all this, like there's just so many different things that come with using that map box versus this map box. Tool free design, thumbs up. The optional polarizer tray. I did not opt for this. Uh, it's a Portarola type thing where you can put a, a polarizer in there and you can roll it. So you can make an, a, a VND out of this if you wanted to. And you could also run a circular polarizer in there. Again, I didn't opt for it. I think it's a really cool option. I decided to go with a, a linear polarizer instead of a, instead of a circular polarizer, just cause I wanted, I was trying to use, which I found out you can't, but I was trying to use my internal ND with a polarizer and you just can't do that. So this is my workaround is running a ND filter. And in this case, again, I'll talk about these here in a second, but the Polar Pro uh, Motion Clubhouse Polar, uh, fil ND filters. So I've been running those with a Nisi, uh, wherever you are Nisi, with a Nisi polarizer, true color polarizer. Uh, this has been my, my stack, but we'll, get into that here in a second. But yeah, you can run a 138 millimeter circular polarizer in this guy if you really wanted to. Um, really cool option to have. Again, I didn't see that as my filter stack is a little different. But yeah, overall, very impressed with this matte box. I do highly recommend it. Uh, it's just another bright tangerine thing. I'm kind of obsessed with this company when it comes to the products that they create. They just, I mean, Everything is just so robust. Here's, here's a demonstration for you. So this is a, I mean, these are two simple things, right? These are just machined aluminum um, filter adapters. So this is, you know, 114 to 77 or 77 to 114. And this one's 67 to 114. This is a Polar Pro. This is a bright tangerine. Um, and I don't mean to throw shade on Polar Pro, but you can hear the difference. Hear that? It's very light which light is nice and it's very robust. Uh, the threads are okay. It feels, for lack of a better term, kind of cheap. Then you get into the Bright Tangerine version and it's just, it's hefty. You feel it. It's not much heavier, but it's just heftier feeling. The threads feel better. It's designed better. You can hear that sound. Versus this one. a very hollow sound to it. That's not a make or break. The point I'm trying to get across is that this is quality built stuff. And that's the one thing I'm trying to portray to my audience, and if you're watching this, is don't cheap out on your products. If you buy the, I mean, I'm gonna throw some brands out there and sorry if you guys never wanna work with me, but the Tiltas of the world, or the Small Rigs of the world, or the Condor Blues of the world, those are great products, and I think that people can get a lot out of those products, but they're not gonna last you in the most part, and to my experience, the long haul. I want something that I can grow with and I can use continuously, and I know is gonna show up the way I show up every time I come to set. And the Bright Tangerine stuff for me is that quality and is that, that you know, step that I want to have when I'm working. 
if it's bright tangerine, wooden camera does a great job. I mean, if you can afford it, get some get some airy you know, accessories. And I think that all those brands understand that they're all in that same category of high quality products. Uh, I chose Bright Tangerine because I like their their company. They're small but big. They um, they create an amazing product that looks good, and that's why I went with them over the wooden cameras. And I mean, I can't afford the airy stuff, so that's that's that. This is a great product, and I do highly recommend it to anybody that's looking for a product that can um, get the job done. So with that said, let's talk about these filter stacks real quick. So this is the compatible tray from Bright Tangerine. And as you can see, I have a few filters in here. Very simple to change these out if you do want to change out a filter. So you have this little orange tab up here on top. You just grab that, pull it up, drop your filter out. And then to put it in, same type of scenario, you just drop it right in there push it up to it, hold it flat. This is the way I do it. Other people may have differences. And then I just let it drop in place. And then you have your you know, four by 5.65 filter right in there. Uh, this is a mist. So I run my, if I run an MD, show you real fast how I run this. So I've got my, again, these are my Polar Pro. I do like Polar Pro products. Um, I think they do a great job when it comes to their fil filtration systems. So this is an ND8. I have uh, ND8, ND32, ND4, and ND16. Um, those are the ones I figured I may grab a few more of these in the future, but as of right now, that's kind of all I need for the type of shooting that I do. So I'll run my ND, Polar Pro ND in there. I'll run a mist at the very front of it, and then I'll run my polarizer in the very back. So that's my filter stack, just like that. Polarizer, ND filter, mist. And I run that for most of my interview setups. Uh, at some point, I might get another one of these to have on my secondary camera, just so I can run the exact same filter setup for both of them. But for now, this'll do. I've got another setup that acts the same way. Um, for my Polar Pro map box, it's usually on my secondary camera. So I'm not always shooting two camera interviews. Um, a lot of my stuff single, single camera, so it's not that big of a deal. But that has been my setup I've had for about, you know, since I got this, about four weeks or so now, about a month. And I like the look of it. You can see, you know, what those shots look like right now with this filter setup on it, so. I don't really have too much else to say about this, except you know, thanks to Bright Tangerine for building quality products that give me the confidence on set to know that my gear, my equipment's gonna show up every time no matter what. And I'm never gonna be floundering or you know, having any issues because of my gear. Quality products, quality brand. If you're looking for a matte box, I do highly recommend the Bright Tangerine Misfit Kick Mark II and you won't, you won't be sorry. You will spend a little extra money than your small rigs or your Tiltas or um, Polar Pros for that matter, but in the long run, you're gonna have this map box for a very long time, and that, I think, it, it speaks dividends to the company and the brand and the product. Hopefully you guys got something from this. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I'll be sure to get back to them, and uh, yeah. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.